Hey, what's going on guys? So I did uh, decide to actually work on the Messer and there's a couple things that I wanted to talk to you guys about in this work in progress video on that. It's gonna be relatively simple, not doing a ton of work on it, but uh, in the end of the review video, I showed how to modify the elbow, the arm to remove the seam line on that, but we do have a seam line here on the side of the head as well that we need to address. So when these two parts of the head are together, you got this seam line running down the side, which honestly not that big of a deal. I'm kind of tempted to just not worry about that uh, if it was just like on this back part or something, but I just want to go ahead and get rid of that seam line. But there is a bit of a challenge as you have a couple pieces that go in there. The first one that goes in here is this part for the piping on the front of the face. Now I'm tempted to just not really worry about that because the piping I can just hand paint and that's not really a big deal. The problem is that the piping is kind of blocking these parts on the side of the face there this area I feel is not going to get a good proper paint coverage because of these tubes kind of blocking that so I want to modify that but also need to make it so that this part can also go into here as well which goes inside the head so as far as that goes I think it should be easy enough to just cutting off this peg here at the back and so let me just pop that off and we'll just give this a try here take one problem at a time put that together so as if our seam was removed here on the head the gray piece is in there and now I, there is another peg there's actually two pegs that that plugs onto there's a forward and a back one cutting off the back one i think should be enough for this to slide in and then pop down onto the front peg but let's just give it a try and see if i'm right or not yeah not quite but i think what we can maybe do is cut down this that front peg just a little bit and cut that in half just a a little bit off that it's a really small one but if I cut that a little bit let me see uh, it's still pretty tight I think it's not going to be enough so let me just go ahead and just cut that all the way down then we'll be fine without that we'll find another way Put that out of the way that does slide back into place now the problem here is that the same part for the pipes on the front there are this little gray part in here which do kind of hold that light tan piece in place so I want to keep those parts on the inside but maybe separate these pipe parts here so I think I can just cut those apart separate them in here so you can see basically if I just cut it right there I can leave a little bit for the pipe to be able to plug into the face and this main part will just kind of stay in there where it is and of course I will remove those stickers a little bit later but at least just for the time being just cut this apart like that and again we'll just put this together just to go ahead and give it a try here so the gray piece will be there on the inside where we need that to be to hold this tan piece in place once that just slotted in there like that and as for this little piping piece this will just plug into the front here like that when it's all good so that looks like it's gonna work pretty well so pretty cool I'm just gonna cut off the piece of pipe there for the other side of the head then we can just go ahead and glue this seam line ah actually uh, one more piece before I forget the piece on the underside of the chin now I'm having trouble kind of pulling that off of there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill that out from the top as well it's just once again using this uh, Mr. Hobby USA Gundam Store collaboration drill set. I highly recommend you guys check out. And I just need to pop a hole down in here from the top just so that I can get, push that part out. There you go. So I'll keep this out until it's painted that I can put in during the final assembly. For now, we can go ahead and get some glue on these parts and let, wait for that to dry and then get to sanding on that. Alright guys, so I'm just making my way now through just sanding everything and getting it all prepped up. So this is all this part sanded, I just need to sand the legs yet and I think that's kind of basically about it. wanted to briefly talk a little bit about what I'm planning to do to weaponize this guy because if you saw in my review, I wasn't really happy with the rifle. I like the beam rifle design, I just find it a little bit uh, small for this very big boy. So a couple things. One, uh, some grenades, which doesn't seem like a lot. These are from a Kurbukia MSG option set. And uh, to be precise, it's uh, this one here. Uh, number 38, the bomb set. So it's got some couple different style grenades in there. Uh, and what I was trying to figure out is how to do a handle, because I wanted it to look like a very simple handle, like this is just something very easily discarded, like just uh, carried into into battle whatever and then use and you know you just discard it it's not something that's just like permanently attached onto or it's not like a big thing so i wanted to s stick with using these hands i think uh but uh, so i could have used just some different hands but i'm going to use the handle from the beam saber and then a couple of the connection parts that we're with here and just glue those together 
to make just this very simple handheld bit here, which will just hold that onto the side of the hand. And then he's just got those grenades on there. And after using them, you can just basically just toss like the handle connector carrier thing for that. That's simple enough, easy enough. The big thing is I'm going to use for his main weapon is the giant heat sword here from Simp. So this is a resin kit here of this weapon. And I was actually thinking about using this for something else, but I thought it, it's, it's quite fitting for this kit, I think, because it's a big bulky kit with a big massive heat sword I think would be pretty cool looking. So this is what I'm going to use for this. So again, thank you to uh, Simp for sending this to me. Got this a couple months back in a box of stuff that they sent for me to play with. So this is just a bunch of pieces here and, and all it's going to take really is basically just some simple cleanup on some of these parts, putting things together and you know, nothing really too fancy. There's no instructions included with this. You just basically have the image on the front of the box to refer to by I assume it's going to be really relatively easy here. And the blade part, I kind of wish that the blade was uh, in molded in clear resin so that you could make it clear if you wanted to. I'll have to just paint this, you know, in just whatever color. I'll probably just paint it like in as inactive and so it'll be like a gunmetal kind of uh, or some kind of silver metallic kind of color for that. And also uh, you can you can sort of see the little bit of seam line there on that. It can, there will be a little bit of a seam line here between these pieces. I'll have to cut off this uh, tab here. Hang on. So yeah, that will fit on there. And you can see this isn't uh, an exactly a tight fit. I think it's just uh, a little bit warped. So I need to heat this piece to bend that a little bit so that it fits flush on there. And then this one will fit on the top of here. And so then once that's fitting more flush, you can see there will be a slight gap there kind of between the two. So I'll have to see about that, what I might want to do with that. Because the way that the part, I mean, is, the way that it fits around here, there's kind of no good way to like attach these pieces together and then it wouldn't be able to like fit into place on here, you know what I mean? See, and this part will go down there like that. This one goes on the top side and then we have a couple of these like hose parts that will go on there as well. So I'll uh, paint those separately and everything. So it should be a pretty cool weapon and there you go. Just wanted to get a couple more pieces cleaned up so that I could put this a little bit more together to get a sense of the size of this and compare it to the case. So you can see like standing it's going to be a little bit, uh, not super a lot, but definitely taller than the actual mobile suit itself. So I mean it's going to be of good size, but I think a good proper fitting size. I mean if you're going to picture a massive sword for this kit, I think it's a good size. It's not to the point where it's like ridiculously too massive, but it's definitely large. I think this was technically meant for 100 scale, but you know considering how big this kit is, uh, I think it should fit fine. Now the other thing I'm concerned about here that I'm testing out now is is that it looks like it's going to be a little bit loose in the hand there, but I'm not totally certain how I want to ultimately pose it. I think I'm going to have it posed like with the axe down. In that case, it probably will be okay because uh, just the weight of it will just kind of hold it there in place in the hand. But you can see there is also a peg that's kind of pre-molded onto the hand there. I'm not sure if that's actually, I think that's meant to be on there. I think, again, I think this was meant for the one master grade Dom, I believe. So I think maybe that's meant to plug into the Dom's hand. I'm not sure. But what I can do is I think maybe make it so that that will plug into my hand here. I can use that tab that's molded onto the handle there. Yeah, if I can get the hand apart. There we go. Uh, so I'm not sure which will be the best way but just because of the way that this is molded here. Actually, it kind of fits in there like that, but then it's a sliding forward and back. So basically I just have it sticking out like that and then the gap between there was kind of holding in place but I think probably what I'm going to do is just cut into here into this inside part of the hand I'll cut a groove down into that so that later this will just slot down into place like this you guys can see that and I'll just glue it into the hand later like that so from the front it won't necessarily look like it's a super tight squeeze I mean you will see like a little bit of gap around there but I don't think it'll really be that noticeable that anyone's going to really uh, pay too much mind to that I think it should be okay the other option would be to just use some different hands, but I was trying out some different hands, looking at some different options, and the different HG hands, even like the biggest HG hands I was checking out, didn't seem to be big enough, and then the 100 scale hands didn't seem to be small enough, so they're kind of like awkwardly sized right between what I could, what I have around here. So assuming I don't figure out some other option for the hands, I will stick to using these. But that's where I'm at for right now, so let me finish getting all the sanding done on the legs and everything, on the body, and then getting the weapons all just kind of cleaned up and prepared, and we'll take a look at it, basically how it's going to be looking uh, before we get into the painting stage. 
All right, so all the sanding now is done, and here's just kind of a mock-up of how the weapons are gonna look and how it's probably gonna ultimately end up being posed on the base. Uh, the With the big, massive sword up over the shoulder for a couple reasons. Number one is that the wrist doesn't bend down, so to have it uh, like a downward pointed angle, just like resting pose, uh, I'd have to like have the arm cocked back really weird, or I'd have to modify the joint to point down more, and so I thought this was just fine, just up over the shoulder. Uh, also, pretty happy with how just the very simple handle there for the uh, grenades came out there as well, so that's pretty much it. It's obviously missing some parts here, I don't have everything fully assembled again. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, the main parts, everything I'll put back together just to give get a look at how everything's coming together, but I have, I'm happy with how this is looking, so pretty much ready to go in and start painting. But before we do that, I do also want to uh, go ahead and add a, a little bit more detail to this with some photo etch parts as well too. You can see the blades kind of falling out of the sword a little bit there. Nothing's glued in place yet or anything. So anyway, let's take a look here at the photo etch parts that I'm gonna be using with this. So I'm really only gonna be using a few. I'm gonna change the detail on these joint covers here by making them a different uh, shape. Or I'm gonna cover up these circular bits with some like circle detail photo etch parts here. So I need to first measure about how big I need in there. So I'm just using my caliper. And a lot of people use a digital caliper. I would recommend that. I should probably get a digital one at some point. This one uh, works like well enough, but a digital one would be nice. So I'm just gonna call that at right about five millimeters. And then I have the ones for the elbow here are off at the moment, but these ones are a little bit smaller here. Those are looking at about four millimeters. So I need to find one of these sets here that has both four and five millimeters on it. And these are not exactly those measurements, but I think this set will work pretty well. So these are once again, also products of a simp and also in collaboration with you as a Gundam store. So you guys should be able to get these. I know these are often out of stock and sell out really quick. So if you guys, see, if they are in stock or if you see them come into stock, uh, pick up some straight away if you want some. But uh, this is, let's see, SIM050007B. So the numbers basically just denote uh, the style and also the size. Uh, these styles are available in a lot of different sizes and stuff too. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lay down some of these on our joint parts here. So let me take some of this apart. So first I'm gonna use a little super glue, CA glue and a toothpick uh, to lay down a little bit of glue on the part first. Uh, before I lay down my photo etch and I do mean a little bit you need to use a very little bit because these photo etch parts are so tiny and thin if you have extra leftover like excess glue coming out very hard to clean that up or get rid of that without uh, ruining the look of your photo etch part so you need a very tiny bit of glue to hold these things down. So my little baby line of glue is down there, then it's just a matter of peeling up the photo etch part and sticking it on there. So you can see this is a little bit smaller. Like I said, I measured that out to be about five centimeters. This uh, photo etch detail is actually 4.1, or not centimeters, millimeters, five millimeters, and this photo etch is 4.1 millimeters. So it's a little bit small in there. Doesn't fit the space, like doesn't fill the space uh, totally, but I think that'll work just fine for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the these in all the rest of our other three caps here for the knees, and then also the smaller size in here for the elbow as well. So next up, now that those are all done, I do want to add some hook details as well too. Now I believe you can probably get these from Simp as well too, but I don't have a set. This set is uh, from AW, I'm not sure. These were the ones that were also sent to me by USA Gundam Store a little while back, but I believe they switched over to using mostly the Simp products now. But anyway, so I want to add a couple of these little hook details on here and these as well. Uh, don't really need a, a whole lot of super glue. You need just a very tiny bit to cover, uh, to, like to stick the little tiny like square part of these. So they're very delicate. So I want to put a couple of small ones up here, just near the shoulder on these parts. And then a couple of larger ones here on the front skirts here and here. 
and then around here on the back skirts as well here and here and so I think that's gonna be plenty for us just a couple of these so these ones don't have the individual sizes listed on here but I'm just gonna use this uh, very small size up here for up above the shoulders and with these I'm not gonna want to put down the super glue first so I need to do it a little bit different this time I am once again going to actually very easily and uh, just put a little tiny drop of super glue on the back of my thumbnail here well not the back of my thumbnail the front is it the front or the back of your thumbnail if you put it on the top on top of my thumbnail I don't know what would you say for that uh, so anyway just uh, be creative with what you have I guess right and I'm gonna pick up this very little tiny piece and just touch it just slightly to the super glue just so that it's got a little bit on the back of there and then I need to stick it down carefully where I want it to go. I should have removed that arm ahead of time. Would have been a lot easier to get this in just the right position where I want it because I want it kind of in the corner here. Something like that I think should be pretty good. So that will be a good position I think for that. Now I just need to put the other one on the other side to match it. So let me get the other one on here as well. That looks pretty good. I guess if someone were to measure that, you'd probably find that they're not exactly, not exactly symmetrical, but I think it's probably okay. If you did want to make sure you know you're doing it exactly symmetrical, probably would be a good idea to measure that. I'm a little bit lazy, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> you probably should measure that uh, in most cases. All right, there you go, looking pretty cool. Yeah, uh, the hooks around here on the back, happy with those, so that's gonna work for that. And then the last couple things I wanna do is uh, basically utilizing the details that are already there on the kit. So for example, here on this thigh part, you got the three little dots there, and then also on the legs here, front of the legs, you got the three little dots there. And then on the front of his crotch section here, you also got the three little dots there. So just to add some definition to those, I'm going to go ahead and just drill those out rather than just filling them in with some, uh, with some uh, panel lining later. So I'm not sure exactly the size. I'm just gonna start with one millimeter and I think that should probably be about right for these. And a couple things on that, at least on this part here on the leg, there's a bunch of part like a uh, detail or like a uh, connection part stuff up inside there. So I'd have to drill like really far through there to get it actually completely through the full part and then through some of that uh, connection material up in there as well too. So I'm not gonna drill all the way through, just at least it's deeper so that it looks like a more defined hole rather than just some like surface detail there, as you can see quite a big difference. But also you'll notice that one millimeter is not exactly the right size. I think those holes are like 1.1 millimeters, so they're just slightly not right. So what we can do uh, very easily is just take a, a larger drill bit. And a 1.5 is a big step up. Uh, ideally you would probably want like a 1.2 or 1.3, uh, but this should be fine. And just very lightly, not really even pushing at all, just let the drill do the work. Just. Uh, leave that here on the top and this is already even kind of taking up more than I wanted to But that's fine. Just a little bit here Just to add some Definition to the top of the hole. I'm trying to take out as little as possible with this So actually I think that 1.5 was the wrong choice I'm actually gonna use a 2.5 because I think this will actually be better uh, for creating the effect that I wanted to. Uh, I think the 1.5 was too close to the size, so maybe I was wrong uh, before saying that 1.2 or 1.3 would be good. Uh, so I guess that would just do more so of what was happening there was that it was just uh, kind of going into the hole. This, what we want to do with this is not go into the hole that we drilled, but just uh, kind of rest on the surface and just cut away the edges of the hole, if that makes sense. Side by side, there's a difference between the two. I think you can definitely see how it's a much more defined hole there. So I like that, that's pretty good. Now, the last thing, so I'll go ahead and go do that uh, then for these parts here on the thigh and the waist part there as well. But while we're here, I'll just talk about the last thing that I wanna do, which is adding some detail with this, a Madworks 0.5 chisel and some 0.5 millimeter plot plate. So what I'm going to do is 
uh, chiseled out some of the details on here. So like we got some of these little detail lines on here, uh, which are not very deep. So I want to chisel them out just to be a little bit deeper in this section here, like on there. And then here on the arm as well too, just to chisel out a little of this. And then what I'll do is cut a bunch of little pieces, really tiny little pieces of this 0.5 millimeter plot plate and stick little, just glue little squares of that in there to give you that sort of like little red latch that you see in a lot of builds. So let me just demonstrate and you guys will see what I mean. Then we're gonna to need to cut some very tiny pieces of this plot plate, and I mean really tiny. And they are still, even though they're tiny, they are still inevitably going to be a little bit too big, but that's okay because uh, we're gonna sand them down a little bit more later. So you just need a few of these little guys. Actually, we're, I'm gonna cut actually a lot of them, but for the moment, I only need a few, but the more you have, because uh, you're going to lose some, you're going to drop some, they're going to blow off your desk or something like that. So just cut a bunch of them. It's just a, this is just extra little plot plate. And you're going to need some Tamiya Extra Thin Cement and some tweezers, obviously. So I'm just going to drop a little bit of cement into there. And then our tiny little piece of plot plate should slot into place into the 5 millimeter trench that we just carved in there for it, basically. So there we go. And at the moment, yeah, it's sticking out a little bit much. And I should also take this moment to mention that 0.5 is very small, but you might find for a lot of 144 scale kits, 0.5 to still be a little bit too large. I mean, you can cut even smaller pieces than I did. Uh, but for 100 scale, I think 0.5 is pretty good for this. For 144 scale, you might want to go to 0.3 which is, I think they actually call it plop paper at that point. But yeah, very thin little tiny pieces that you're gonna wanna use for this. And it depends on the effect. If you want it to be a more obvious effect, obviously you can use larger pieces. But So I need to give that time some time to cure and then we'll come back probably in a couple hours and I can go ahead and sand that down lightly and that will uh, be so it's not such this big rectangular piece just jutting out of there, which I mean, it's tiny, but it's still in the scheme of the entire kit, it's still a little bit larger than I want it, so we'll come back and sand those down a little bit, and that'll be the end of it. So that's all good and dry now. Like I said, just gonna give this a little bit of light sanding. You could use sandpaper or just a light sanding stick, something to just basically take the edge off, as it were, because, you know, it's just a straight, very rectangular piece stuck in there. You just don't want it to be quite so sharp. So this will take down the height. So like I said before, it doesn't really matter the size of it if it's sticking out too much. So we're gonna sand it down a little bit so that it's just barely sticking up uh, higher than like the base armor piece. So I want it to be sticking up just a little bit. I don't want it to be super sharp on any of the corners. So that's what just this little bit of light sanding should take care of that. Get a little brush brush and we can check it out, see if we need to do any more. And I think that's looking pretty good. So I think I may give this one just a little bit more on here. There we go, that's looking pretty good. All right, so now that's just about it. All the rest of them are done too here. Front skirt, back skirt, and arms inside, outside, on the top of the chest here and there. So uh, everything's done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and toss all the parts into the bath, get them all cleaned up, and then we'll get on with the priming, painting, and all that in the next video. And as always, guys, if you have any other comments or questions, you can feel free to leave those down below. Thanks so much for watching and all your support, guys. Liking, commenting, subscribing, all of that's greatly appreciated. Y'all have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye guys.